welcome. Come in. This is one of the three spaces we have in the lab. This is a shared space, it's a very large space, but uh, we have lots of exciting related, pro related projects on robotics. So I want to show you this one first. Um, this is uh, at the core, it's a two-arm robot that can do a couple of things. And you see here that are on display is a robotic hockey player. This is the most exciting project for me in the lab. We have a robot playing L hockey against a human. We have, of course, a robot arm over here, but also vision systems to detect not just the L hockey, but also the location and the velocity of the L hockey on the platform so that the robot can actually react and compete against the human. So you see here, we're just using one robot arm, but uh, this is a much more sophisticated setup. We actually used the robot, used the entire system for many different things. Previously, we used the robot to play Rubik's Cube. We can actually make the entire system solve an arbitrary Rubik's Cube within 20 steps. So you can click the link and be able to see more. We're also doing a lot of things more on the artificial intelligence side. For example, for the robot to play chess game. So again here, using computer vision as well as control of the robot, we are having a pro few projects to uh, study the vision system, the required vision system and uh, uh, algorithms to be able to detect the map on the chessboard as well as the locations of uh, the queen, the horse, etc. A lot of cases for printing parts for rapid fabrication. But also we have uh, very interesting results in 3D printing to do, for example, create objects that have unusual properties. So this one, depending on the location, how you look at the object, you will perceive the object differently. So in this angle, you probably will see this is actually a circular shape on the top. However, it's the same object but if you look at from this angle, then it's not circular, but it's a rectangle top. This kind of optical illusion is important because we have also uh, machine learning based on this visual data. So proper angle and uh, proper data collection actually is important for machines to be able to, for humans to, to understand what's going on, but also uh, for machines, for them to be able to tell what is what, which is which. This is one of our recent additions, a mobile robot. It actually can go hand in hand with the robotic arm that you saw earlier. This one has a few lines of research, location of itself in a 2D environment, and then the coordination of the robot. This is something that's pretty cool. Let's say, imagine a human sits on a mobile platform to do a certain tasks, let's say, to paint a wall or to stand the surface of a ship. Then there's lots of motion uh, from the environment, either from the ground or from the ocean surface. Then coordination of the mobile platform with the robotic motion on top of the mobile platform is important. So uh, by proper control of the mobile robot, we can actually have a steady motion at the end of our uh, hand or a uh, robotic hand. All right, so that's another project over here. We can go to a different room and see a couple of more robotic projects as well as a much bigger extension of the 3D printing uh, project that you saw over there. All right, let's go. This is another shared space and on my right hand sit here, these are all space for the lab. So this space is almost entirely dedicated to a 3D printing project. So come on in. This is actually the biggest equipment in the lab. The robotics in the other room were built entirely by the lab. And this one is another entirely 
in-house built system. So all the electronics, all the machining, and all the uh, hardware comp subsystem components are built by our lab members. This is for big project for 3D printing. So if you compare this with the little printer in the other room, you will see that it's much more complicated and it's fundamentally built on different energy source. So here the energy source is actually a laser energy source. A uh, 100 watt dioxide laser goes into a bunch of optics and then gets reflected inside this chamber. So the chamber here inside are for different purposes. Material processing, uh, studying interaction between lasers and materials. The chambers can go up and down and then laser is going to shine down from the top to the bottom over here. So let me show you some of the things that we do with this printer. So the printer actually processes very fine materials, powder materials, 100 micron or less in the diameters of the particles. Uh, this is a few layers of printing. You can see the resolution for the edges and, and circles, etc. This is already quite a few layers, more than 10 or 20 layers. And this, it feels like a piece of hard paper. So we have a bunch of research projects along this line. We can go back to here. The printing technology is used actually for high performance materials. For example, the same technology is used to print structures for aerospace components, aircraft engine components, heat exchangers, etc. So a significant amount of research is about ensuring quality of the printing. If you think about printing uh, simple printers, plastic printers, you can imagine that the quality is not there yet for many of the things that we wanted to do. So we have a bunch of sensors inside the system from temperature sensors from to thermal sensors as well as visual sensors to just to figure out and control the complex process better to achieve the good part properties. So that's one of the research, control aspect. But also we're doing a lot of materials research. So uh, something over here have shown a little bit of the things that we are doing. Materials is always a fundamental aspect of manufacturing. So to create material, to create parts with required properties, actually that's a whole bunch of materials research. For example, new materials for aerospace, lightweight replacement of metals using plastics, as well as how to more efficiently use the material 3D printing, how we can recycle and repurpose materials in 3D printing process. The final piece of the manufacturing is because 3D printing can build so many interesting structures out of a CAD profile better than other manufacturing processes. So how to design the parts, how to create parts with unusual or even sometimes counterintuitive properties is also a thing that the lab works on. Welcome to the third space. This is actually our new space. We just moved in maybe two or three weeks ago. So we're still setting up things right now. But one project is already running and we're setting up the space for a few other projects. So this is another robotic system set up in the lab. And this one is actually pretty amazing. If you take a look at this part over here, some parts similar to an aerospace component. You can see that, uh, of course, the geometry is complicated and uh, for aerospace applications, the surface property is very important. Uh, inspection is actually very important. Human inspection is very difficult and tedious. 
if you take a look at the surface structure here, it's very, very tiring for humans to do inspection of these parts. We have to use different type of lighting and then sometimes use magnifiers to be able to tell the fine surface structures. Now, it actually makes a whole lot of sense and importance to create a robotic system for inspection of components that look like this. Here is our robot setup. We have, again, obviously a multiple degree of freedom robotic manipulator with some end effectors that can grab a part so the robot can move around in the three-dimensional space. This is the shooting tent for the parts. So the actual part for this project is actually much smaller than the one that I just showed you. So there's a lot of configurations inside the shooting tent to create the proper lighting, to create the best pose for the light, for the part in front of the camera, and then to automate everything from triggering the camera, from aperture control, from the robot coming down to here to grab the small parts and then put it inside the shooting tent automatically based on the sensor data that uh, it can achieve as received from the camera at the end of the manipulators of end effector. So this is a very exciting project for us uh, in collaboration with the aerospace company and uh, founded by one of the Manufacturing USA Institute.